Good morning, dear brethren. The Lord bless you. Welcome to today's devotional that uh, we're going to be following the line of yesterday's preaching. And we're going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 18. 1 Samuel chapter 18, as of verse 6, uh, talks about a situation that brought radical changes in the nation. Changes that affected some for the better and others for the worse. I will uh, read again part of the uh, scripture that was read yesterday and that it says the following. When David returned from killing the Philistine, the woman came out of all the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul, playing songs of joy on trimbles. The woman sang as they played, and said, Saul has killed his thousands, and David his ten thousands. Then Saul became very angry, and this was saying did not please him. He said, they gave David honor for ten thousands, but me only thousands. Now what more can he have but a king? And Saul was jealous and did not trust David from that day on. The next day, a bad spirit sent from God came upon Saul with power. He acted like a crazy man in his house while David was playing the harp. Saul had a spear in his hand and he threw the spear thinking, I will nail David to the wall. But David jumped out his twice. Yesterday, in the first part of the message, like you uh, were connected yesterday, we had a cut in the electricity. Uh, sometimes things happen, and later, uh, thank God, we were able to uh, recover the supply of electricity, and we were able to continue the work. That's why the mes yesterday's message uh, call uh, their victories that change life, you are going to be able to find it in two parts, the first and second part. And I repeat, the power outage is something totally uh, 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 oblivious to our will, and, and uh, we had a few minutes where the broadcast was stopped, but thanks to, to the Lord that we could recover it. Having said that, yesterday, we were explaining the name of some giants that, like David, killed. And I was explaining that the names of those giants, they, um, they had a, a meaning like any other name. And we can have a personal application of those names in our lives. And we can see how the meanings of those names of those giants in the time of the King David mark, in a sense, his life. Now, that day, the day that King David killed Goliath, there was a joy in the country, indescribable joy, because during a month and a half, this giant was provoking and defying the soldiers of Israel, and they had them really scared until David came. And the little David, with no, whom nobody was counting with, the, there was an unknown person so far. He took authority and he solved the problem in the name of his God. A great victory and tremendous joy. Finally, the threats were coming to an end. And the, the joy and the peace and the tranquility had re been re re restored. But despite that David was a man that, was, that came from less to more, the next day of that overwhelming victory, something happened in the life of the, of the king, the maximum authority of Israel. And it was that because of jealousy, because of the envy, because of those uh, des derogatory comments that he made against uh, David, an evil spirit began to haunt him, and he began to have serial and uh, physical and, and, and mental problems. So, the Bible says, do not give place to the devil. When you start to criticize, when you start to question, when we start to believe superior to others, when we give a, a welcome to jealousy and envy that unfortunately abounds a lot in, in our lives, and I have to say that even in the Christian world, even in the evangelical world, we're giving chance to the, to the Lord. When we question the way that people dress, when we question whether they raise their hands or they don't, or they don't. when we question whether there is too much light or little light, 
When we question whether the preacher is raising too much his voice or he has a softer voice, when we qu question anything and everything that we see in and intentionally, unconsciously, we can give place to the devil. And the Bible, I repeat, says that do not give any chance to the devil because the devil, my dear brethren, you don't have to pay attention to him. You don't have to pay any kind of ear because he's around, walking around, seeking whom to devour. And sometimes, unfortunately, we give place to the devil without having to do so. Uh, David was obedient, uh, an obedient young man, and he was very brave and courageous. A person who knew how to wait his moment. He waited how to wait for his opportunity. And the Lord started molding him and preparing him to put him in the on the throne of Israel as a king. He should, it shouldn't have had to be that if things would have been done the right way. But Saul was a person that did not know how to take advantage of his opportunities. He gave in more than one time a place for the devil. And how did he end up? He committed suicide. He took his own life. And how did David finish? With glory, victory, and the blessings of God. The servant of God, David, died with the God's blessing while Saul ended up in the most absolute shame. My dear brethren, La, yesterday, the day before, everybody, including the king, had to have rejoiced. But when Saul listened to the young girls of Israel dancing with their tambourines, praising the Lord and saying, Saul uh, uh, killed thousands, and David to tenth of thousands, he did not like the lyrics of that song, and he was extremely upset. And then he said that, that the only thing that is worth is that you give the kingdom to him. Those comments opened a door that at the end ended destroying him. How careful should we be of what we speak, of what we share? How careful we have to be with our comments? Those, that jealousy, that envy of Saul apparently was not there, but when he had the opportunity, the true that Saul came out, and because of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So let us guard our heart, because from there life emanates from it. Let's ask the Lord to, uh, to stop derogatory comments and critic, criticism judging, gossip, are removed completely of our lives. Because in the end, the, the, the most harm was Saul. He ended up losing respect and the support of people. He, he lost the presence of the Lord in his life, and he ended up losing his life. Why did he have to do that? To finish like a toy that ended up broken. All of that because he did not maintain holidays and the communion with the Lord. We are in difficult times, and the church in, at worldwide is being tested. Ministries and are being tested. Pastors, workers, deacons, families, everybody is being tested. Let's not waste time. Let's not be looking at the straw in somebody else's eye and forgetting about the, the big log that we have in ours. Let, may the Lord keep us and help us. May the Lord make us aware of this reality, that we cannot waste time. And, and talking uh, about other people, criticizing, questioning others. This jealousy problem is something very serious. Jealousy makes a person who has that problem in a very dangerous person. The Bible says that in several occasions, Saul, with his own spear, that was for, to kill enemies. He was uh, wanting to kill other, especially the Philistines. He was using that to kill David. Brothers, do not use the weapons and the gift and the talents, the influence that we have to hurt others, to manipulate people to pressure the people of God, but let's use the weapons of our, mil our military that are not kernels to destroy strongholds, to spread the gospel of the kingdom of Christ, to glorify the Lord, but not to attack the same soldiers that we're working with, not to attack and criticize and, and ourselves. The religious spirit that was 
at some point in time in the life of, of our soul, uh, dominating him, it was a, a religious spirit. It was just a, an attitude of, a, of religi religiosity when he was appearing to be a spiritual, when he wanted to pretend he was mature, when he wasn't. That religious spirit that makes us believe superior to others for the way we dress, by the way we speak, by the way we act. That spirit must be totally rooted out of our lives, totally, completely, because that religious spirit has nothing to do with a true maturity, true holiness, and a true uh, growth in the, in, in the life of, of a Christian person. Therefore, my dear brethren, here we have two characters, David that goes from less to more, and Saul that goes from more to less. The difference is very clear. The attitude, the words, the life, the behavior of one and the other are very clear. Today the Lord is speaking today to your heart. He, he brings word to your life so that you make it up your mind. How am I going to speak? How am I going to behave? How am I going to minister? How am I going to see other brothers that are being more blessed or maybe more used than me? But that has nothing to, to be sad, but on the contrary, because the victory of my brother is my victory. His defeat is also my defeat. We are a body. When one cries, all cries. When one laughs, all laughs. When one rejoices, all rejoices. So, dear brethren, we're going to enjoy ourselves in the blessings of other people. We're not going to only be uh, uh, sympathizing with the sadness or the need of a person. But we're also going to enjoy when we see somebody used and blessed and prosper by the Lord. Because if we do not rejoice with the victory and the blessing of our brothers, then we have a serious problem. And that, that problem can have a person, even a pastor can have that, 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 that preaches to the word of God. Saul was a king, but he also had serious problems in his heart that he never got rid of, that he never fixed, and look how he ended. Therefore, that's why the true self is going to come out. We have to crucify that. We have to deliver, give it to the Lord and not allow under no circumstances that attitude, carnal attitude, attitudes and derogatory words, etc., are manifested in our lives, but that our words have to be to glorify Christ, not to question the brothers, Our words have to be to lift him up the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, not to belittle other people and, and to mock other people. I hope that this word has been very clear to you today and that not only we say amen, but that we put it into practice, that we internalize this truth because we're not here this morning. I am not here this morning to entertain you. I'm, no, or to put little uh, sweet words in your ears. We're here to share the word of the Lord. And the word of God is not just to say amen and amen. It's just to say amen and then I'm going to do it. Not only I'm going to hear it, but I'm going to put it in pr into practice. That's the word that will bring you changes. It is the word that will make the change from one uh, nap in one side, from the religiosity that has been during a lot of years, to a life of life that glorified and honor the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there where you are, if you, if you want to do it with me, we pray to the Lord and we ask his blessing and, and his coverage so that this day really will be a day of growth. Let's take advantage of the opportunities for us to grow. Let's take the opportunity to mature when they correct us, glory to God, when they count us as glory to God. When they don't call us for or whatever, glory to God, maintain your attitude because the attitude is what makes a difference. Don't be a carnal Christian like those of the church of Corinth were. Be a mature Christian. Be a mature who has deep and rooted roots in Christ and his word. Let's pray to the Lord this day. Heavenly Father, thank you very much this morning, my Lord, because you allow us one more day to start a day with you and in your word. Lord, we ask you, uh, we ask, we ask you for, to forgive us for attitudes and comments that sometimes do not glorify or edify the brothers and sisters and the body of Christ. I want to ask you, Lord, in a very special way that you will protect us spiritually and physically and psychologically, that you will renew our strength so that we can continue preaching and serving you in your kingdom. Keep us, uh, keep your uh, church and, and uh, revive your work. Take out all wrong attitudes 
to that we have all wrong coming, that we haven't thought, everything that you do, would not do. Lord, and in the name of Jesus, we put this day in, in your hands and we ask you that we want to grow and mature and we want to glory you and honor you. We put our lives in your hand in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you, brethren. I hope that this word has uh, reached you strongly and clear in your life, that we will put it into practice, and we will be reflecting throughout this week on each of the words that the Lord brings to our hearts. This is the word of God that, that God put in our heart today. So that we read it, the first uh, and, uh, and first and second uh, Samuel, and let's reflect on what the Lord is telling us and showing us these days. May the Lord bless you. Greetings to all of you and blessings.